welcome to Dispatches from India, a show by People's Dispatch. This show is dedicated to covering key issues from across the country. In this episode, we will look at the issues faced by workers during the COVID-19 lockdown, which has been extended, and the plight of the families of prisoners from Kashmir. We also look at the success of the state of Kerala in containing the pandemic and the steps it plans to take. Our first story is on the situation of migrant workers. India entered its fourth week of the lockdown on April 15th. Prior to that, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had announced that the countrywide lockdown would be extended for three more weeks until May 3rd. The country is still facing a rising number of cases. As of 5 p.m. local time on April 18th, the country had 14,792 cases, of which 12,289 were active. As many as 488 people have died. Meanwhile, the situation of the poor continues to worsen. In the reports of the last few weeks, we had seen how migrants had begun fleeing India's big cities in large numbers. As of April 12th, 32 migrants had died in road accidents alone after the lockdown. They are among the 181 people who died due to lockdown-related distress across the country. Those who remain back in the cities face an uphill struggle. Our team spoke to migrant workers in India's capital city of New Delhi. Here is what one of them, who comes from the state of West Bengal, has to say. My name is Sajid, sir. Sir, I am from Malda town of West Bengal. Malda town in the, is our district. We work here, we stay here. Because of lockdown, our stay has become very difficult. Lot of difficulty in getting money or food. We are surviving somehow. Till now, we have received no relief. Let's see if government helps us in the future. We will try to receive some help. That's our hope. I used to work in a school, received no money after the lockdown. So our household is facing a lot of problems regarding food etc. It is uncertain when we will get some relief from the government. I haven't received money from the beginning of this month. Today is 17th. We don't get our jobs back after the lockdown ends. We will have to return to our native places. We have to survive somehow. No, no, we could not understand. We thought it was only for one day on the 21st. Then we thought we can survive for 14, 15 days, maximum one month. But now we are realizing the condition is bad. Now it has been extended up to third and there is no guarantee of it not being further extending. Now we don't know how our kids will eat. We are hoping for some government help. Definitely we will try to go home if the government arranges something. At the village we do farming, although the situation is not very good there, but we will manage with the food we will produce. We will have to go home, we don't want our kids to suffer here. So we hope that the government provides us with train or bus as soon as possible. That's our request from the government. Surveys have proved that these are not isolated instances and are not restricted to New Delhi. A countrywide survey of over 11,000 workers found that about half of the migrant workers stranded in the cities had ration that would last for less than a day. About 96% of the surveyed workers had not received ration from the government and 70% had not received any cooked food. The numbers were the most grim in Uttar Pradesh, when none of the 1,611 workers surveyed had received any ration from the government so far. 
our team also spoke to a laborer in the city of chennai in the south who is experiencing very similar problems i am from west bengal murshidabad district police chowki lal gola police tabi lal gola we had come from west bengal to chennai for work one month ago lockdown happened so my work has stopped because the work has stopped we are stuck in absolute crisis isliye mera kaam band ho gaya kaam band ho gaya to mera bahut musibat mein phas gaya i don't even have money i have nothing to eat so i want to tell the government to please arrange for our food or else arrange to send us back to our village vyavastha kariye nahi to humko gaon bhejne ka vyavastha kariye aap log in our second story we look at the families of prisoners from kashmir in august last year in a sudden move the indian government abrogated the constitutionally mandated autonomy of the state of jammu and kashmir it then split the state into two union territories which are directly under the control of the central government today the people of kashmir do not have any say in their governance around the same time this happened many people in the state were arrested these include politicians but also common people many of these people were sent to prisons in other states such as uttar pradesh and remain behind bars till today With the COVID-19 pandemic spreading across the city, the families of these prisoners are extremely worried about their fate. The NewsClick team spoke to some of these families. Family members of Kashmiri prisoners who have been lodged in different jails across India since article 370 was scrapped express fear and anxiety in the wake of covid-19 outbreak that has gripped the world mere bhai ka naam ashok khamat rothar hai jo peshe se ek maulvi tha 4 august jis din ye article ka hua remove hua usi din usko uthaya gaya raat ko hi aur use le jaya gaya bahar agra up mein tab se humne ek bar mulakat ki hai usse august mein अगस्त से अब तक हमने उसे ना देखा है ना पता है कि वो कैसा है ना ही हमें पता है कि वो किस हाल में है मतलब पता है कि बीमारी कब के आज वक्त बहुत बड़ी मुसीबत है दुनिया में इस वक्त बीमारी फैल चुकी है और हमें वो उसके साथ ना रबता है ना ही कोई फ़ोन कांटेक्ट है अगर फ़ोन कांटेक्ट हो तो सोचते कम अज़ कम कि वो ठीक है दूसरी बात यूपी में आगरा को रेड जोन दिया गया करार दिया गया है मैं हुकूमत से गुजारिश करता हूं कि अगर उनमें से किसी एक बंदे को कुछ भी हो हो गया तो पूरे जेल में फैल जाएगा फिर हम कहां उसके पास जाएंगे या उसको अगर यहां लाएंगे तो फिर हम देख भी नहीं सकते हैं उसको आठ महीने हो गए उससे बात किए हुए हमें ना तो हमें इन्फॉर्मेशन है कि वो कैसा है मैं यहाँ भी गया था एस पी साहब के साथ ब्याह के साथ उनको लाओ यहाँ पे इन्होंने बोला हो जाएगा कल शिफ्ट हो जाएगा परसों शिफ्ट हो जाएगा किसी ने बोला पंचीस जनवरी पर शिफ्ट हो जाएगा कोर्ट भी हमें एक तारीख पे दूसरी तारीख दे रही है मसला ये है हमारा भाई पाँच अगस्त से बंद है मेहरबानी करके हमारे हमारे इस भाई को रिहा किया जाए सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने भी अपील की है कि इन लोगों को मतलब रिहा किया जाए लेकिन बोलते हैं करते कुछ नहीं है कितने मतलब लोग मर चुके हैं लेकिन हमारे मतलब किसी को भी अभी तक नहीं छोड़ा है हम गरीब हैं हमारे पास कुछ नहीं है मेरे वाल साहब का नाम अब्दुलरशी डार है जो पिछले नौ महीने से आगरा के सेंट्रल जेल में पड़ा हुआ है जिस दिन वो घर पे था दो अगस्त को नाइट रेड पड़ी थी शाम के टाइम फौज और पुलिस पार्टी आई थी उसको निकाला घर से और रातों रात उसको पहुंचा दिया आगरा उसका हमें पता नहीं है कि ना हम उसके उसको मिलने गए थे पंद्रह अक्टूबर को पंद्रह अक्टूबर के बाद आज तक हमें पता नहीं है कि वो किस हाल में है वहाँ पर उसके साथ क्या हो रहा है हम शाम के टाइम यही सोचते हैं कि अगर खुदा ना करे ऐसा कि अगर एक को लग सकती है वहाँ जेल में पूरे जेल को लग सकती है हम पूरे हम ज़्यादा बहुत ज़्यादा खोफ में हैं कि पता नहीं क्या होगा एंड फाइनली वी गो टू द साउथ इंडियन स्टेट ऑफ केरला विच इज रूल्ड बाय कम्युनिस्ट गवर्नमेंट केरला was the first state in the country to register a case of covid-19 hundreds and thousands of residents of the state work in other countries so the state faced a risk of high number of infections however 
the government was prepared and through a very thorough process managed to contain the number of infections. Today, Kerala has the best recovery rate in India. The state has also won praise for its variety of economic measures that have helped the poor and the workers in this time of crisis. Kerala has been able to do this despite the fact that there has not been much support from the central government and the right-wing Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The state's government and policy makers remain vigilant. Yet they are also looking at what lies ahead after COVID-19. We spoke to the Finance Minister of Kerala, Thomas Isaac, on what are the sectors that would be most affected and what are the plans for reopening these sectors. I have no illusion this uh, pandemic is going to end in May. Hmm. I think we are going to have a long, um, a year period or year and a half period where COVID is going to be the new normal. You have to right. learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. So we are thinking, okay, we should devise a strategy of um, isolating all our elderly and vulnerable population. And right. It may come to about 15-20% uh, uh, of the population. They strictly stay indoors. Mm -hmm. And then we want to reopen the, our uh, economy. Uh, they are there, they will be monitored on a regular basis and uh, and and if they have some problem to be immediately addressed uh, luckily we have got um, i think uh, one of the biggest uh, database on health no we didn't get it's the who uh, right and uh, we have got this uh, their uh, tuberculosis program generated data so we are thinking of some big data analytics to to have simulation studies done to draw up a strategy for this. This is being the thinking. Now, having done that, how do you open up? You start immediately with agriculture. Even mm. under strict lockdown, we have been promoting household vegetable cultivation. Okay. Right. Now we can extend it. So then you go into the uh, cottage industries, self blood industries, small scale industries, and so on. Then you take a give a preference for your export industry mm -hmm. because the export industry uses like uh, cashew processing choir and so on. And you don't you break the contract, you may lose the market in future and so on. There are long run implications for future. Right. Therefore, you'll be relaxing them. Of course, trade and so on is there. Um, so systematically, you have to draw up a plan, and that plan has been. Outline has been made by a committee which has been appointed. Mm -hmm. Now, impact of COVID is going to be very different on different sectors. For example, commercial crops. Uh, they are going to be least affected, I would say. Right. It will be immediate impact because, you know, uh, the demand for this material, raw material are going to go down because of recession. Prices are going to come down, etc. But trees are there, okay? You... You, so I think that that would be the sector which is least affected. But you know what we are afraid of, mortally afraid of, what's going to happen to our external migration, right. migrant workers in the Gulf and Europe mm. and so on. Mm. Um, they contribute to about 35% of our uh, income equal to 35% of our GDP. So. Now it seems like a large number would be returning mm -hmm. uh, because there is no job there, the recession right. there, therefore they all will have to come back. They cannot survive in Gulf without a job, and we want to. We will. We are. They are our citizens, and they will have to be helped. And rehabilitating them is going to be a big, big challenge. Biggest challenge that Kerala is going to face. Mm -hmm. Not only rehabilitating them, we have to quarantine every one of them. And you know, nobody knows the numbers. I mean, right. 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, one doesn't know. Um, it's going to be worse than Kuwait war, uh, where we had to take in something like 60, 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. But now this is going to be much, much larger. Right. So this is one problem, one issue that you know. there are sectors like tourism, for example, uh, which, um, which uh, will take a long time. 
Okay, mm-hmm. tourism is not going to open up. But we want to plan for the next season, December. Okay, December starts a new season. And we'll start the marketing now. That's mm-hmm. what will start. Mm-hmm. Thinking that things will be normal by December. We are not mm-hmm. going to lie back and see December to come, but we'll start. Mm-hmm. And I think Kerala, resilient Kerala will be our brand name. You right. know, mm-hmm. all these people from USA, Britain, and so on who were marooned in Kerala, um, they are living you know, from Kerala with a great impression. Mm-hmm. Those who have been um, in our hospitals, uh, their testimony is they wouldn't have got better treatment in Europe. Right. Uh, so I think we will utilize them also and uh, plan. Mm-hmm. So uh, what I want to say is exit strategy is going to be much more complicated mm-hmm. because it is not an exit from COVID. COVID will be there right. and, uh, until herd immunity comes up or they get um, Vaccine first. for that, right. and one doesn't know these uncertainties. Mm. Um, so I think we will left. And the one sector is the China. We have to learn mm. what the hell they're doing. Mm. Uh, really, it's a great job, but we can't do that. But uh, to, I read today in Economist that eighty percent of the factory production is back. There is something amazing. Mm. The whole layout of the factories are being changed. Mm. Uh, to accommodate social distancing, this, that, right. and the kind of unheard kind of um, technological changes that are being introduced, mm-hmm. uh, they are copying up. They don't want to give up the markets. They are going right. to be ready, the first ones to be in the market. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could learn a little bit from the, mm-hmm. the pharmaceutical industry in Kerala, right. the medical devices, and so on and so forth. And this is this appropriate time to make a step forward in that. We have a long thinking. We have a health sector which is appreciated all over. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should have a sector like um, the pharmaceutical also. Some factories like what the Safrullah did, can did in Bangladesh. No? Right. I found we have one uh, public sector unit, KSDP is named. Oh, they tell me they're just waiting license. Um, this organ transplant, mm-hmm. the patient has to take lifelong um, some five pills. We cost two fifty rupees now. Uh, this are telling me that they are willing to produce it for thirty rupees. <laughs> this is the difference. Okay, mm-hmm. um, so uh, maybe we should have a medical device and. Uh, pharmaceutical industry within Kerala. Mm-hmm. This would be appropriate time to push this. So right. strategically, we are thinking about this exit plan. Right. That's all we have in this episode of Dispatches from India. We'll be back next week with the latest news from the country. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. <laughs> Avan Sanyam